All right, so get a little extra practice here on checkpoint 10a. Uh, make table values and draw a graph of, e of each exponential function. Make sure to use and show appropriate scales. So I've already set this one up because I worked this one out ahead of time. Uh, the starting point right here is 4. You should know that that's the y-intercept. So it's in the form y equals a times b to the power of x. Hopefully you know b is the multiplier and a is the y-intercept or the starting point. And let's just plug in some points. I think because I know this is positive or this number is bigger than one, I know it's going to grow like this. So I'm going to get more points on the right side than on the left side. So what I'd like to do is go negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three. Versus this one, it's going down because this number is smaller than one. So it's going to be like this. So I'd like more points on the left side. So I'm going to start at negative three, negative two, negative one. 0, 1, 2, just because it's, it's not that big of a deal if you are off by a notch. And use your calculator and plug in the values. So plug in negative 2 here. So you just, if you just go 4 times 1.5 to the negative second power, it'll give you the right answer. If you want to hit equals along the way, that's fine. Just make sure you do this part of it first. 1.5 to the power of negative 2, hit equals, and then times 4. Uh, you do not want to multiply these first, multiply these first two together first. So uh, You should get 1.5 here. We can plug that in. We can plug in negative 1 here, 4 times 1.5 to the negative first equals. Double check on your calculator. Uh, you should get 2.6 repeating. Oh, I'm sorry, this is 1.7. I must have read my own. It's 1.7 repeating, not a 5. I thought that was a 5 on my other paper. 0 obviously is going to be 4, because anything to the 0th power is 1. 4 times 1 is 4. 1. Uh, 4 times 1.5 to the first is just saying one, uh, 4 times 1.5, which is 4 and a half a set of 4, which is going to be a 6, and then a 9, and a 13.5. So make sure you can plug those in. And that's just a matter of graphing them. So negative 2, 1.7. Negative 1, 2.6. There's 3, there's 2.5, somewhere in here. I can keep going. What's going to happen is this is going to curve right here. And then on the positive side, 1, 6. There's 5, so there's 6. 2, 9. So go over to 2, 6, 7, 8, 9. And 3, 13. So 3, 10, 11, 12, 13.5. Somewhere in there. And that's going to be hard for me to draw this with the mouse, but you get the general idea. It's going to not cross this axis. If you want to double check, put in like a negative 10 or something. And if you do 4 times 1.5 to the negative 10th, which I don't, didn't do ahead of time, uh, 1.5 to the negative 10th, I get a real small decimal. So it's, it's basically this comma 0 0.07. So just a very small decimal. And the further I go left, the smaller the decimal, but it's not going to go negative. Make sure you include your arrows. Make sure you include some points on here, it's these, just these two points is fine. Something, okay? Especially on this one, because these are going to get real huge here. When I plug in, I'm going to plug in 0.4 here to the power of x. If you would rather just do two-fifths, just make sure you use parentheses. And when I plug in negative 3, I'm going to get 312.5, 125, 50, 28, and 3.2. Double check, make sure you can get those values. And then I have to graph these. Now, these are in the hundreds. And this is small. It's going to go down like this. It's going to get really steep. I think I'm just going to go by 20s. It says use an appropriate scale. Now, I don't want to go by 1s, obviously, because that's not going to make any sense. But if I go by 20s, so if I go like these are 1s and these are 20s, so if I go 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Maybe put this, I know it's going to go down, so I'll go on the right side. 120, 140, 160, 180, 200. And if I don't mark this scale, I will assume that you mean that it goes by ones. So let's do that. So negative 3, uh, 312.5 is off the scale here. So I'm not going to worry about that one. Um, negative 2, 125. So here's 100. Here's 120. 120, 140 is next, so somewhere in here. Uh, negative 150, 20, 40, 60, so right in between there. 
And we know it crosses at 20. Because this, this uh, the power is 0, this is 1. 1 times 20 is 20. Or that's just playing the y-intercept. 1, 8. So 1 over, that's 20. That's 10 is halfway, so it's just, just under that. And this is going to keep getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So 3.2 is an estimate. This shoots up real high, but this is good enough. Try not to let this line cross that axis as you draw it. Okay, arrows on both sides, and that should be good. Now, if you if I ask you to put this in a real world situation, uh, you just like for this first one, I just say you start with four somethings. Like let's say you have four dollars, and you're <clears throat> excuse me, you get one and a half times as much that amount every so often. And there's your so often. Um, over here, you start with something. And you're losing, if this is 0.4, you're losing 60%. Um, as of this point, I don't have this kind of a question on this checkpoint, but it's a good, it's a good thing to know. Uh, I still might add it to the checkpoint. So if it's a decimal smaller than one, you're losing a certain percentage. You just do one minus this percentage. Okay. Um, you could also say you're making 40% of that, and it's going to keep going smaller and smaller. I just think this makes more sense. All right, good luck. Hope that helps.